Let's try to answer our second question first. So we start with padding. To remove the ambiguity about the plain text length that are not divisible by B, which is the block size, a structured set of bits can be concatenated to the end of the plain text. This operation is called padding. But here the important thing is that it should be a structured set. You cannot just simply fill it with zeros because we already seen why it fails. Inappropriate padding schemes can be dangerous. There are a lot of examples in the literature, so you should be careful when performing padding. The best padding scheme is to append the one bit to the end of the message and then append as many zero bits as required. So this is like the one of the easiest but good, good schemes that we have. An example is as follows. For instance, let's assume that we have a block size of 32 bits and so it is four bytes, but you want to encrypt three bytes like this. So in order to encrypt these three bytes, the fourth byte is missing. So you fill it with the padding. So in the hexadecimal notation, here you have eight bits. So it is a single one and seven zeros, which is uh, described as here. So when the person who decrypts this message will obtain this and will remove every zero at the end until the, they see a single one bit and they see it here. So they remove this 80 part. So obtain the three bytes that is the original plain text. So a good question to ask is, what if this is the original message that I want to encrypt in this scenario? So assume that this time you want to encrypt a block of message, which is now four bytes, 32 bits. And the last byte looks like a padding. So how do we encrypt this case if we are using a padding scheme? So uh, if you are using padding scheme, you always have to apply the padding. So you have to apply padding to the end of this message too. But since uh, the block size is 32 bits and uh, this is already 32 bits, you have to create another block and apply the padding there. So you start with a single one and 31 zeros. So if you use padding, then you want to encrypt a message that is a multiple of the block size, then you have to create another block. So this causes a message expansion. So if you want to encrypt n blocks, but uh, the data is uh, completely fills this n blocks, then you have to encrypt n plus one block. So in practice, this doesn't cause much of a problem in terms of uh, uh, time and uh, communication bandwidth because a single encrypting a single uh, block doesn't require much uh, computational power and sending it 32 bits or 64 bits or 128 bits that are unnecessary shouldn't cause much of a networking problem but for the Lightweight scenario, you have to think about it because if the device you are using has a very limited uh, computational power, then performing an extra encryption for an extra block would uh, uh, consume more power and your battery would uh, deplete faster. So this is why you have to be careful uh, for using padding in the lightweight scenario. And we have also uh, some solutions to avoid this message expansion. So before talking about that, let's look at padding in classical ciphers. So think about the classical ciphers where we were simply using uh, pen and paper methods and we are just sending letters. So beginning and ending of official messages are predictable because they start like my dear ambassador or ends with sincerely yours, etc. So the attacker can always guess the beginning or at the end of the message. And if they capture the ciphertext, now they have the ciphertext and beginning or and the end of the message. So by looking at the relations from these parts, they may decrypt the whole message. So to avoid this, uh, people also use padding in classical ciphers. Uh, so this is what I said, an attacker with the ciphertext can get some parts of the plain text. To avoid this problem, 
Random words or letters can be added to the beginning and at the end of the plain text and then encrypted. So in a military setting, the officer who decrypts the message looks at the beginning and at the end and sees unnecessary words there and they remove it before giving the message to the uh, person who's intended to. These extra words and letters are removed after the decoding. So in history, there is a famous example where uh, a wrong padding actually caused a huge misunderstanding. <clears throat> this is an example from uh, World War II. It's a famous example. So during the Second World War, Admiral Chester Nimitz sends the message various repeat various tests for 34 to Admiral William Halsey. And uh, they apply a padding to the beginning and at the end of this message. So the uh, radio office told that the padding at the end actually belonged to the message. And they decrypted the messages, various repeat, various task force 34, the world wonders. So the world wonders actually the uh, padding here, but the officer couldn't be sure if it is from the padding or it was the uh, original message. So the admiral who received this message uh, thought that it was a harsh and sarcastic book. So as a consequence, Halsey dropped his pursuit of a Japanese carrier task force in a futile attempt to aid United States forces in the Battle of Samoa. So just because of a wrong padding, uh, even military actions can be performed in a wrong way. So. This was an example from a classical cipher, which is famously known in literature. So let's look at ciphertext stealing. Instead of padding, you can also use ciphertext stealing, which actually uh, prevents the cause of message expansion. So, so sometimes the name is misleading. You are actually not stealing anything here. So this is not about attacking or breaking, okay? This is for a, instead of a padding scheme, you apply something different. So a general method that, this is a general method that allows encrypting messages that are not a multiple of the block size B, uses the last two message blocks, hence does not work on shorter messages. So this is important. You cannot uh, perform ciphertext stealing uh, if you're encrypting a single block. Does not use padding does not cause message expansion and this is the idea and this is actually important because i told you that a message expansion is not a problem in practice most of the time because encrypting an extra message block doesn't uh, doesn't cause much of a problem but think about it as a, a full disk encryption if when you're encrypting a file or something if it causes a message expansion then uh, at the end, you may end up with files which are actually larger than your hard disk size. So uh, in full disk encryption or file encryption, you wouldn't prefer a message expansion. So this is why ciphertext stealing methods most of the time are used in full disk encryption techniques. So ideas as follows, this picture for the idea of ECB mode. So this is the last two plain text blocks you, have to, you want to encrypt. And there's some empty bits here. So instead of performing a padding here, ciphertext stealing method works like this. So you encrypt the uh, one previous plain text block and obtain the ciphertext block here. And by looking at the empty place here, if it is 10 bits, then you make this tail as 10 bits. If it is 20, you make this part 20. So you take that many bits and append it to the end of this plain text block. Then you encrypt this whole thing. So the tail part becomes double encrypted, but it doesn't matter. But you uh, take it to this part and take this head, which is already encrypted to here. And uh, this will be, this will look like as if this is the last ciphertext block you encrypted. Good thing is that since you remove the tail from here, uh, there will be empty places here. So as you can see, the plain text size becomes identical to the ciphertext size. So there is no padding, there is no message expansion. And the person who wants to decrypt will follow the same thing in the reverse order. So they have the secret key, they will decrypt this part, take the tail, put it here, take the last block here, put it here, and then decrypt it again to obtain this plain text block. And here, once you encrypted this part, you already have the final plain text block here. 
So this is a good practice. And again, this is used in most of the time in uh, full disk encryption techniques. <clears throat> 